So at this point in your project, we hope you have collected and organized data in column form within an Excel spreadsheet. Today, what this lesson will help you to do is to use some statistical tools that are built into Microsoft Excel in order to be able to determine if there is any statistically significant difference between three groups of data. In this case, the data we'll be using are the bowling scores from three hypothetical bowlers, Pat, Mark, and Sherry. Please take a moment to open up your own copy of Excel and type in the score values from this sheet. I'll check back with you in about a minute. All right then, so you've got your columns of data, and as I said, what we want to be able to do is determine if there's any statistically significant difference between these different bowlers. The numbers in red here at the bottom of each column indicate the simple arithmetic means or averages of their scores. Pat with an average score of 154, Mark with an average score of 178, and Sherry with an average score of 156 across the six games that each of them have bowled. It does appear as though Mark is the better bowler, but the statistical analysis tool known as the ANOVA test or the analysis of variance will allow us to determine using some agreed upon statistical parameters as to whether there really is a difference in their scores. So here's what we'll do. If you look up here in the tool tab, you'll see a tool or a tab marked data. So we'll click on that data tab and then looking way over on the right hand edge, we will see an option called data analysis. So move your cursor over towards data analysis and click. You'll notice that that opens up a whole option, a list of options of the analysis tools available within Excel. And we can scroll up and down to see some of these other tests. And the one we'll be using right now is the ANOVA single factor. The only factor that should be affecting these bowling scores is which bowler rolled the ball. So we'll use the ANOVA single factor and press OK. Now the first thing it's going to ask us is to define an input area. So I'll click on this little red arrowed icon in the right hand edge of the input range that reduces the dialog box to a small strip that I can move to different locations to get it out of my way. And I will highlight the entire block but not including their averages. So I've selected cells from A1 through C7 and you can see that showing up here, A1 through C7. Uh, don't worry about the dollar signs just right now. We'll discuss those in class. So now to get back to the spreadsheet, I'll click again on the icon in the far right hand of the box. And that reopens the full dialog box. And you'll notice we want to make sure that we check this box here on the left edge that says labels in the first row. And we also now need to define an output range. And so we'll click down here in the lower part of the box and click again the little red icon that takes us to the spreadsheet. So I'll click on that button and that again reduces the dialog box to a more manageable size that I can move anywhere on the page to make it convenient. And all I need to really do is define the upper left hand corner. So I'll let that be cell E1 and then I will go back to the dialog box, go back to the spreadsheet, Let me bring this up so we can see it, and now I'm ready to press OK. So to review we went to the data tab, across to the data analysis menu tab, and that opened up a data analysis dialog box from which we have selected a NOVA single factor test. So again, let's pause and 
work through those steps and get to the point where you have defined the input range and the output range for your ANOVA statistical test. I'll check back with you in about 30 seconds. All right, so here we go. We've gotten to the point where we've defined the input range, the output range, and let Excel know that we have labels in the first row. And now it's time to press OK and allow Excel to do its statistical magic. You'll see now that what Excel has done is populated the area that we defined for the output with the ANOVA single factor and because we included the headings of in our data table over here Pat, Mark, and Sherry and told it we had labels in the first row it has Excel has listed here on the side Pat, Mark, and Sherry the count to each of them bold six games the sum Pat bold a total of 922 pins Mark 1065 and Sherry 937 it's also calculated the averages for us and of course what we could probably do here is highlight these cells right click format the cells let Excel know we want numbers with only one decimal place there that's tamed the way the numbers look and we see that Pat's average is 153 rounded up to 154 which we see over here underneath Pat, Mark with an average of 177, and Sherry with 156. Now here's where the ANOVA test really gets interesting. You'll notice in the lower part it talks about the variation and over here we see an F value in the lower right hand edge of 1.5 and we see an F critical of 3.68 or basically 3.7 and the way we interpret this is that if the F value is greater than the F critical, then there is a significant difference between the three groups. But we'll notice in this case that the F value, 1.5, is less than 3.7. And so even though these averages seem to be quite different, indeed when put to a statistical test, there is no significant difference in their bowling abilities and that Mark's higher average seems to come from a couple of lucky games. So we'll see you in class and good luck with your statistical analysis of your data from your research project.